If you create consecrated space, if maximum number of people are constantly in touch with consecrated spaces, you would see human beings would blossom with a completely different sense of wholeness, homogeneity, an organic way of looking at life, above all, full-fledged human being. What living in a consecrated space means is, this uh, Isha Yoga Center is... I feel like the whole space is just so energetic and so vibrant. I could just go throughout the day, keep going and keep going without even a moment of tiredness. So, consecration essentially means to make a physical space reverberate with a non-physical dimension of energy. In a way, that's what you are. This body is a physical thing, but right now it's reverberating with a non-physical dimension of energy, otherwise it cannot be alive for a moment. If you know how to touch this, you don't need any consecrated space because this is a consecrated space. But you're not able to touch this. So we want to create that kind of energy in a more palpable way, where you can touch it, where you can feel it. So consecration is the science of bringing that forth in such a way that it's palpable, that you can almost touch it. So every day before uh, my Hatha Yoga practice, I usually try to take a dip in the Surya Kund, which is an energized uh, body of water. I can definitely feel a distinct difference when I take a dip and then do my Hatha Yoga practice. The word teeth means inflamed or energized water. We can energize water in different ways, as today there is substantial science telling us that water has memory. This is something that we've always known in this culture, that water has memory. How you treat it accordingly, it behaves within you. The water that you drink, the water that you get into, if you treat it in a certain way, accordingly it behaves, responds to you in a certain manner. This body being over seventy percent water, if the water around you and the water that you take in are pleasant or energized in a certain way, this entire system can change. If the water behaves well within you, seventy-two percent of your problem is over <laughs> So Tirtha Kund is an opportunity for people to transform the waters within themselves. So this is an energized pool, it really brings balance and uh, stimulation to your nervous system without any stimulants. Above all, it balances the energy within you. The energy body comes to a certain level of balance and rejuvenation. So to enhance my experience with the Dhyana Linga, I often go to the Surya Kund. Uh, I stay there for some time and then go to the Dhyana Linga and I can see my experience there is much more powerful. Whenever I feel overwhelmed during the program, I go directly to the Analinga. The moment I close my eyes in this place, I become meditative naturally. I don't even try to meditate. Um, it's really a privilege that we have a great support system in form of these consecrated spaces. It makes me more balanced and focused. What is unique about the Dhyana Linga is uh, that it is a manifestation of all the seven dimensions or the seven chakras. When I say all the seven dimensions, the human physiology is constructed this way. It is a meditative force. There is no worship, there is no ritual, there are no offerings for the Dhyana Linga. All that you're required to do is sit there quietly. One has to just simply sit there to experience and imbibe the energies of Dhyana Linga. It's a live form. It has everything, as an energy body, it has everything as a peak human being would have. Only a physical body is absent, but in all other ways, it is like a living guru. So it is an opportunity for a spiritual seeker to do his sadhana in the presence of a live guru. The most fundamental thing why a spiritual seeker seeks a guru is 
because a guru can ignite his energies into a different dimension. That aspect of guru's role in a spiritual seeker's life is very well fulfilled by the Dhyana Linga. Dhyana Linga can ignite one's energies into a completely new dimension of vibrance and possibility. Whenever I have some free time, I go there because this place is full of life. Actually, it took me a while to be able to experience this consecrated space, but now I really enjoy sitting there. I just feel happy, loved, and sometimes overwhelmed with this feminine energy, which is something I cannot even describe more. It's I feel like a sense of protection from the Devi and also a sense of warmth, uh, which just makes me feel really grounded and protected and it's, it's really nice, uh, it's a really nice experience. If you want to experience Dhyana Linga, you need uh, awareness, you need alertness, you need to be meditative, sitting still. But uh, if you want to know her, you need aliveness, you need exuberance of life, you need madness of devotion. Out of the whole Isha Yoga Center, uh, we usually spend most of our time in the Adiyogi Alayam. Uh, we eat there, we sleep there, we do our practice there. I notice whenever I'm in the Adiyogi Alayam, my practices happen in a completely different way. No one's there to really give me the correction, but somehow I don't, I have no idea how, but somehow the practices are getting corrected on their own and just certain asanas that I really had a lot of struggle with and uh, like specifically Matsyendrasana, like for a very long time I had the flexibility to get my arm behind but just a few minor adjustments and changes uh, kind of allowed me to get in the asana and that's something that's really unique to uh, Adiyogi Alaya. The Adiyogi that we created in the Adiyogi Alaya was mainly created as a repository of Hatha Yoga. It's a… it's a little difficult to explain to you how a form is a repository. But today it should be easy for you to understand, for this generation of people it should be easier to understand because today you understand, you can carry a small USB, and you know, this stick has not of information in it. So if this stick can store information, you can also store it in another form. So this is a composite, let's call it a computer if you like it that way. It's a composite computer which is a certain storehouse of information, a certain storehouse of energy, a certain storehouse of reverberation which will reverberate for a very, very long time. So, I thought it's a fundamental responsibility to put Hatha Yoga in a certain repository which cannot be distorted. It's always available. If there are people, if there is a person who is willing to receive, he will know Hatha Yoga in its purest form, not as it is thought but as the way the system is. Hatha Yoga is not something that you teach to somebody. It is something that you make somebody realize what is the nature and the geometry of his system. As he understands the geometry of his own making, then he will find the right postures for himself. And invariably it will be the same postures. There is an intrinsic intelligence and a competence here, right inside of you, which can make an apple into a human being. If this has to blossom and find expression in many different ways, it needs a conducive atmosphere. That is what is a consecrated space. If you create consecrated space, if maximum number of people are constantly in touch with consecrated spaces, you would see human beings would blossom with a completely different sense of wholeness, homogeneity, an organic way of looking at life, above all full-fledged human beings not lopsided human beings. <laughs> this must happen.